Lastly, can I just say to commend Assemblymember Duval for his tenacious pursuit around this domestic violence piece and serial offenders. It's really, really important. And I just want to congratulate him and encourage him to keep going. Um, Mr Mayor, just to pick up on the points, what work is City Hall, what work is your office doing around helping the police do more focused work in recovering from this outbreak of COVID? Because I speak to many people in the community who are absolutely worried about outbreaks in gang crime, individuals making threats across the internet. Is City Hall asking the police to do specific things to combat this rise in violent crime? So, Steve, can I welcome your comments on the cross-party approach to domestic abuse and you commanded yeah. uh, Lendeval. I think Londoners will be impressed by the way we're working across parties on this issue that affects so uh, too many Londoners. And just for the impression of the Assembly, the data from the Met Police Service showed more than 4,000 domestic violence arrests were made in London uh, uh, in the first six weeks of lockdown, which shows the police do take this very seriously. And just like in, a, in answer to a previous question asked uh, about uh, complaints, I'd encourage any Londoners who are the victims of domestic abuse to please report it. Don't suffer in silence. The second point you raised also, I'm really pleased there's cross-party support, is to see what's happening below the radar during the lockdown, particularly uh, uh, organised crime uh, uh, criminals, but also potential gang members using social media to do the sort of stuff they do out in the open when there was a lockdown taking place. And just to reassure the assembly member, the Met Police Service spent a lot of time uh, during the lockdown and are still doing so, monitoring social media, seeing if there are any threats being made, if there's any criminal activity taking place. And, and you'll have seen some of the good work of the NCA on a much more bigger organised crime uh, operation. Uh, but can I reassure you that the Met Police Service and indeed police forces around the country because of county lines concerns, uh, do see what's going on in relation to criminals using the lockdown as an opportunity uh, to you know, plan and to organise and to do more crime. Uh, we're, we're trying to make sure as we ease lockdown, the police suppress that sort of into more criminality and more violence. Thank you for your answer. I think what I'm trying to push at here, um, the last four years have been characterised by record amounts of knife crime, 11 year high in homicide. I really want to focus on what your office is doing to ask the police to do more, to, do, to be smarter around how they tackle these forms of crime. Because, of course, lockdown has suppressed these things. But the real worry now is that we have an explosion of, of, of pent up criminal activity. And it's the job of your office to provide leadership on this. And I want some idea of what you're doing in particular to help the police think through what they'll do next to suppress crime moving forward, particularly violent crime. Sure. So we've seen violent crime going up since 2014 uh, across the country, including uh, London, but also youth violence going up uh, across London, across the country since 2014. Um, and what we've done since I've become mayor is to try and address the massive cuts that we've had in London. Uh, up to date, we've lost £850 million. Pounds. The government wants us to cut it further, £236 million pounds over the next uh, two years. So what I'm doing from City Hall is uh, we've increased council tax precepts diversity business rates to address that cliff edge fall we've got coming from that we had coming from the government. Secondly from City Hall, we've been investing in the Young Londoners Fund, more than 70 million pounds, diverting young people away from uh, unconstructive things to constructive things, but also set up England's first violence reduction unit. The Home Office have helped us with the VAU uh, in the first two years. And what City Hall has done uh, during the lockdown, because we're worried about uh, an increase in violent crime, you call it an explosion of violent crime, is to say to the government, it's really important that we have certainty about funding in years two and three of the government's announcement for more police. You'll be aware of the uncertainty in relation to that. But secondly, you'll be aware that because of the reduction in council tax down 7%, business rates down 11%, we could be losing uh, £5 million pounds over the next uh, two years. We want to avoid having to um, uh, not have the increase in police officer numbers we've had, so asking the government to support us for actually there. And the third big thing we're doing, which is new uh, during the lockdown, is the new violence suppression units. This is on top of the violent crime task force that we uh, help fund. And the violence suppression units are more than 600 police officers uh, placed across the 12 BCUs, uh, one inspector, two sergeants, a number of officers who work in each BCU. And they are based in that geographical area. And one of the reasons for that, as the name suggests, is violence suppression, which is to target the micro hotspots. We can work out granular detail which parts of a, not a borough, but a ward has high levels of criminality. Be proactive and target those areas as well. And any help that you can give, lobbying the government, 
a tough price in relation to resources we need, not to make any further cuts would be really appreciated, I'm sure, by all of us. There's no doubt that the, all of the GLA group and the Metropolitan Police in particular face a financial mountain to climb here. But most of what you said is historic activity. What I want to focus on is what your office is doing to deal with what's coming down the pipe. It's your job to keep Londoners safe. And you could characterise much of what's happened beforehand as a failure because we've had record levels of knife crime, levelling high, high in homicide. My point here is what are you going to do to help the Metropolitan Police think about what they do coming up down the line so we don't have the level of failure and the level of death on our streets that we've had previously. And that, that's my motivation here. What are we going to do next? Because okay. we don't lock down. We don't want the result of lockdown to be that criminal activity was just pent up. We want it to be that the police were able to do something active, which it sounds like they have, but your office was able to provide leadership so we can keep those gains going into the future. Well, I think, uh, to, to be fair to the answer I gave, I, I appreciate you may not be listening, but the things that I've said are all new things. So, violence suppression unit, new. The violent crime task force didn't exist before I was mayor. The Young Learners Fund didn't exist. The work we're doing around the bike hotspots, new. The work we're doing in relation to domestic abuse is what I'm giving to secure accommodation, new. The work the police have been doing over the last few weeks during lockdown to help the 4,000 victims is so. Uh, after April, new. The work we're doing in relation to lobbying the Home Secretary not to make further cuts, new. The the seven percent cuts in council tax, new. The eleven percent cuts in business rates, new. Uh, the concern about a new era of austerity, new. And so I'm surprised that you don't seem to recognise that we face a raw issue in London with a new era of austerity caused uh, by the government not supporting our city at a time we need support. And the impact this has is also on the economy. We contribute between a, a, you know, a, a quarter and a third of our economic output. So the government's going to support us both in relation to the issue of crime. It's really important to get a grip on violent crime, uh, as you and I both agree, it's been going up since 2014. We're also supporting our city economically because that's linked with the ability of uh, regional local government to provide the public services we so desperately need. What you said is at best a mix of old and new measures. And of course, it's your job to keep us safe. You've ultimately, ultimately you have failed because you have a record level of knife crime, um, 11 year high in- Chair, I'm happy to answer questions, but you, what you can't do, Chair, is have speeches, because otherwise I need to have equal time to respond to a speech. Um, you've spoken uh, a lot more than I have, Mr. Mayor. Chair, uh, can, can, can I, we I, stick I, to measures uh, post sort of lockdown, which is what uh, the main question is? And I wish that the mayor had done that as well. That's enough for me, Chair. Well, the Thank advantage you. of Tony Wan's video screen model is you can read a question without listening to the answer. But the way mayor's question time works has got to be using some intelligence to ask questions and you know respond to the answer I give. Chair, okay. Let, let, let's stop the here. Not to reply. Right. Look, let, let, let's stop here because you know we're go, going round a bit in circles here. But he, Chair, he, mayor he has been four years here. Wastes our time. And he's been supported in that. That's all I've actually sure, what you read whose script are you reading, Sean? Sure? Bit a bit more collegiate in the way he answers, Chair. Well, you should stop reading questions and become a responsible assembly member. Right, okay. Um, Mr. Mayor, are you suggesting look, that you don't read your notes? That's look, the, the, this is taking us no no forward at all. Let but, let's but, uh, yeah, the, the, we got I to a stage where we'd like to like to move on. Thank you. Chair, we, we, we're stopping you, here. Sorry, the, the mayor is rude. He's unnecessary. Where's the question, Sean? Where's the question? You can all see that, Chair, and, look, and look. I think you need to say something to him about can, his childish behaviour. Can, can we please uh, stop here?